Good morning. I'm Don Palmer, Commissioner with the Election Assistance Commission. A swatting describes a false emergency call to draw a heavily armed police force or SWAT team, which stands for Special Weapons and Tactics, to a, spe a specific or special location. Swatting as a crime has been around for a while. However, in late 2023 and, 2020, and early 2024, there were multiple swatting incidents regarding specifically targeting election officials. This includes Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ascroft, Maine Secretary of State Shinabellos, and Georgia's COO for the Secretary of State, Gabe Sterling. Now, due to the rise and sophistication of these incidents, we've invited, invited Robert J. Hebele to join us today to discuss this issue. Mr. Hebele currently serves as the Deputy Chief of the Public Integrity Section of the Criminal Division of the U.S. Department of Justice, and as the Director of the Public Integrity Section's Election Crimes Branch. During his 10-year tenure in the section, Mr. Heberly has handled the prosecution and trial of complex public corruption and campaign finance cases throughout the United States and received multiple awards for his service. Now, he's also a member of the EAC Board of Advisors, and we appreciate his input. Mr. Heberly, thank you for being here today. Uh, to begin with, um, I'm going to ask a very general question. Um, what is swatting? legally, and how has it become more sophisticated through the use of technology? Is it a federal crime, a state crime, or a, basically a hybrid? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much, Commissioner Palmer, for having me. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today. Um, swatting, as you briefly mentioned earlier, is essentially the making of a false report to law enforcement regarding an emergency in order to entice an armed tactical response to a particular location. Uh, which can include, for example, the home of an election official or an election office. This kind of activity is incredibly dangerous as it can lead to victims being startled and surprised and potentially injured when a significant law enforcement response occurs unexpectedly. In addition, swatting can divert important law enforcement resources from genuine emergencies. Recently, we've seen a variety of technological tools used to engage in swatting. That includes, for example, artificially generated voices used to make, make hoax 911 calls and the use of, of uh, voice over IP and virtual private network services to try to conceal the origin of the calls. Some of these calls also originate overseas. Uh, in terms of what sort of statutes can, that can apply to this kind of activity, swatting can be both a federal and a state crime but the particular statutes that apply to a swatting incident will depend on the specific facts of each case. So how would you so describe, how would you describe the trend of swatting, particularly against election officials in recent years? We have unfortunately uh, seen multiple swatting incidents targeting election officials uh, and other public officials in the past several months. Uh, you've mentioned a few specific examples at the beginning of our conversation. Uh, this trend is very concerning to us. Uh, election officials have to be able to do their jobs without fear of violence or threats of violence, and that includes swatting attempts targeting election officials. Uh, for that reason, the Department of Justice, along with our partners at the FBI and other federal agencies, will vigorously pursue any individuals who engage in violence or threats of violence against election officials. Um, this trend is as I said, very concerning and something that we take very seriously and are doing everything in our power to combat. So what kind of impact does swatting have on its victims and their families? Well, swatting can have a significant impact on victims and their families. Um, that's because a tactical law enforcement response could be at a minimum, uh, an incredibly startling event that can lead to a lot of emotional distress uh, involving the victims. But even more significant, Swatting incidents in the past have led to significant injuries and even death. Uh, and so swatting is something that is an incredibly dangerous thing to engage in uh, and can be a, a very startling experience at a minimum to be a target of. Um, for that reason, it's incredibly important that law enforcement take whatever steps uh, are possible to try to identify those who have engaged in swatting and punish them. And hopefully uh, by doing so deter future incidents. As I mentioned before, election workers play a critical role in our democracy uh, and they deserve to feel safe and to be safe at all times. And so swatting targeting election officials 
is something that has the full attention of the Department of Justice and the FBI. Uh, and we intend and we are using every lawful tool at our disposal to find and punish those who engage in this activity and stop others from committing similar crimes in the future. So Rob, are there preventative measures that election offices and officials can take to avoid potentially aggressive events like swatting from occurring? Uh, yes, there are a few preventative measures um, that uh, election officials can take and, and should take, uh, particularly in advance of the November general elections. Um, so first and foremost, I would say that election officials should partner with their local law enforcement and emergency responders uh, to share the names and addresses of election workers who might be, who might be uh, targeted by swatting incidents and election related locations. Uh, swatting incidents may target not only the homes of election workers, uh, and you discussed a few specific instances uh, involving uh, those kinds of swatting attempts earlier, uh, but also we could see in the future swatting targeting polling places or election offices or vote tabulation centers. And by sharing this kind of information with local law enforcement in advance of the November elections, election officials can help mitigate the impact of swatting incidents uh, because local law enforcement can create alerts in their dispatch systems that essentially trigger a flag uh, when there's some sort of emergency reported at one of those locations. So law enforcement knows going into that location that it may be a swatting incident. Um, and then second, uh, election officials should coordinate with their federal law enforcement partners, uh, and that includes their FBI election crime coordinator or ECC. Each of the FBI's 56 field offices has an ECC who is a special agent who's received particular training on election issues, including election threats. Um, and the ECC should be the primary federal point of contact uh, for election workers throughout the country. And finally, election officials should take steps when possible to reduce the availability of their personally identifiable information online. That's because people who are engaging in swatting may be looking for that kind of information online in order to target election workers and election offices. Uh, election officials should also remain aware that they may be targeted by phishing tactics or social engineering techniques in order to obtain more information about themselves. Uh, and so they should be, remain cognizant of that risk uh, and ensure that they do everything they can uh, to avoid being the, uh, the victim of a phishing or a social engineering technique. So, Rob, if an individual or office finds themselves in the midst of one of these incidents, what should they do? So I'll, I'll say to start um, that hopefully this is not something uh, that election officials uh, will generally have to confront. Um, but in the event uh, that something like this happens to a particular election official, the first thing I would say is stay calm. Uh, listen to and comply with all law enforcement instructions. Uh, if law enforcement is at the office, at your home, uh, the, the number one rule should always be stay calm, comply with their instructions. Uh, we should all realize this can be a very stressful experience for both the victim of the swatting attempt and for law enforcement that's responding to something that they think could be a genuine emergency. Uh, and just keep in mind that law enforcement will need to take steps to determine whether, in fact, there's a real emergency at the location. And then keep your hands visible to law enforcement at all times and make slow and deliberate movements. I would also say that if you suspect that you're being targeted by a swatting incident, but law enforcement has not yet responded to your location, call 911 uh, and provide the dispatcher with any information you have indicating that you might be targeted by a swatting incident and be prepared to answer any questions. Uh, in addition, after talking to 911, please contact the FBI, um, primarily your FBI election crime coordinator, so the FBI can begin investigating as appropriate and attempt to identify uh, where the swatting uh, attempt may have come from. And then finally, uh, election officials should ensure that they have a continuity of operations plan in place. Uh, in the unlikely event that a swatting incident temporarily forces a pause in operations at an election site, such as a polling place or a tabulation center. So has the Department of Justice election crime branch been involved in any of these cases? And if so, what does that process look like? So uh, it's a very good question. Um, we can't comment on any ongoing investigations, uh, but I can tell you that the Department of Justice takes this issue extremely seriously. 
Uh, and we are using every lawful means at our disposal to find and punish those who engage in squatting activity directed toward election officials and election mm -hmm. locations. Uh, this is an incredibly important uh, effort uh, and we recognize the gravity of these kinds of offenses and the need for election workers to feel safe and to be safe. Uh, we have publicly charged 19 defendants over the past two years or so with engaging in violence and threats of violence toward the election community. And we're continuing to investigate and pursue any unlawful threat of violence toward the election community, including swatting incidents. Um, I'll also add, if I can, uh, Commissioner, that any person with information regarding a potential swatting incident should report that information to the FBI. Um, even after a swatting incident has occurred, time can be of the essence in terms of tracing that call, figuring out who's responsible. And so immediately after any sort of swatting incident, election officials should report that first to their local law enforcement authorities and then to the FBI. And then as appropriate, we in the FBI will take steps to identify the caller and hold them accountable. So are there any other resources that the Department of Justice has or recommends to mitigate uh, swatting instances? Uh, yes. Uh, so the FBI has issued joint guidance on swatting incidents targeting election workers, along with the Department of Homeland Security and CISA. Uh, and this guidance is available on uh, CISA's website, which is cisa.gov. Uh, in addition, the Department of Justice has launched a website recently, it's justice.gov slash voting, that contains resources related to election threats, as well as a description of the cases that the department has brought in this area. Uh, I would say, however, first and foremost, uh, the number one resource for election officials is going to be their local FBI election crime coordinator. And it is important that election officials establish a good working relationship with that ECC who can discuss particular issues and help officials with their planning regarding potential election crimes uh, and election security in the upcoming November elections. Mr. Heberly, thank you for joining us today. And I'm gonna thank you for your service to the EAC's Board of Advisors. You provided this a presentation on this um, to the participants of that meeting and we were grateful for your input. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, it's been a pleasure.